Please take your seats. School is now in session. Welcome to Homeschool Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschool. It's time to document the journey. We missed you guys. That's right. I said we because I'm here with the co-host Kevin Lyons. Hasn't hey. been here in a minute, bro. Where it you was been? been longer than a minute. Do you know how to tell time? Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> been you haven't been well, dude. I'm only doing one episode a week this month just because I got so much shit going on. And uh it's just like easier to do like, hey, dude, you want to do a quick, you know, with a guest? Or I, I did a couple by myself. And um, yeah, man, I'm working on the, that sitcoms, the sitcomics thing which is mm-hmm. going good tomorrow. We're going to do Seinfeld. I've got everybody I need for that. And then, uh, very nice. Yeah, man. So, uh, and I just been on the road and stuff, man. I F- Phoenix was awesome. Sacramento was great. So by the way, thank you everybody that came out to the Sacramento shows. It was fucking phenomenal. Um, huge success, dude. We sold out four shows, bro. Four. So four. out all four. Yes. All four. All four were sold out, and I think we like oversold a little. I had to add extra like tables and stuff. Um, How was it? It was great. If, if I saw guys, some of your clips, you looked like you were having a blast. It was fun, dude. Did you see that video I posted today about taking your temperature? It's a new bit. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I liked like that it. one. Didn't you, didn't you see my like notification? I liked it. Yeah, but some people just like it and they don't actually watch the bit. They're just like, hey, I, I watched it. <laughs> I even clicked on the IGTV thing so I could see how it ended. Yeah, did you like it? You thought of course, it was funny. You, you swore at Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did swear at Bill Gates. I call him the dipshit. <laughs> but only because he, he didn't he didn't get behind the, the, the reader on the yeah. temperature thermometer. <laughs> What's up, Jameson? He's he like, who the hell just said my name? name? He just heard it. Um, all right, really quickly before we begin, this episode is brought to you by Masterclass. You guys, uh, if you haven't done already, I don't know what you're waiting for. Masterclass is not going anywhere. You're the only ones that they're waiting for. So, um, and, and you know what, while you're waiting, they just keep adding classes that you can take. There's a, there's a course on just about anything. So there's no more excuses not to go ahead and pull the trigger on that thing that you've been interested in or that you want to better yourself at or just broaden your education. I mean, anything, history classes, you can learn languages, but what I find it useful for is there's comedy classes, writing classes, script writing, acting, cooking. I mean, there's something on there for everybody and they just keep adding more. So click the link in the description and you can start using Masterclass today. No more excuses. It's time to hit it. 2021 is your year. Every year, including 2020 could have been your year. All right. And it's up to you in your hands. Even Jameson was like, what? <laughs> Look at him. Um, Dude, it looks like you're just podcasting with him. It looks like I'm just podcasting with a dog. So guys, click the link in the description. We're going to hook you up. Normally, if you want to take a course, it's $90 a course. But for 180 you can have a, uh, access to the entire website for a whole year. So you can take all of the courses if you want to. Switch it up, writing, acting, comedy. Uh, you know, it's all on there. So click the link in the description and you're supporting the homeschool podcast. And while you're at it, make sure you support us by going to homeschooledpod.com. If you click on tour, you can see upcoming tour dates. And um, if you click on merch, you can pick up a t-shirt, a sticker, mugs, my comedy album. And we really appreciate you guys getting a a t-shirt or something because it just makes us feel all special when we see you wearing them. All right. Um, All right, let's do this. Welcome back, Kevin Lyons. And Jameson. And Jameson the uh the pup dude um carmine carmine wasn't doing good today bro why what happened i don't know man like he woke me up in the middle of the night and he was like i heard him crying like just i was like what i I woke up i was like why is he crying i went and checked him to see if like maybe he was like sometimes he'll cry if he like (laughs) scratched himself he was listening to radiohead in the corner (laughs) (laughs) dude like sometimes he'll scratch his ear with his nail and he'll cry I went and checked him and it was nothing like that. He was just laying there. Crying. I'm like, okay. And then this morning I took him for a walk and he was walking real slow, man. And then um, like Jen's out of town. So uh, my mom had to walk him this afternoon and I didn't say anything about it to my mom, but even she texted me and was like, he looks weird. Like he looks sad and he's like moving really slow and he has a hard time getting up the stairs. So I think maybe he's just getting older and it's re- when, it, when it's really cold, I think his yeah. joints are hurting him. Probably. How old is he? He's like seven now. It's kind of old for people, yeah, man. Yeah, he's getting up there. He's getting up there. Yeah, so. yeah. Jameson was in the 
doing good, too good. He kept on chewing on his paws. Yeah, Carmine does that too. And it, and he ended up getting a sore on there. Yeah. And he was and he was like limping. And so you know, Minnie brought him to the to the vet, and they said it's because he had an ear infection. I'm like what the fuck? What? They're like it's because he can't get to his ears. He chews on his feet. Oh yeah, like a little nervous. Yeah. Stuff. That's oh, interesting. I hope Carmine's okay. I gotta come over and play with him sometime. Yeah, come visit him. He'll be all right, man. I, I, th- I think I gotta get some like vitamins or something for his bones now that he's getting older. And 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 you know, before you know it, it'll be warmer. Be, it'll yeah, be what? pretty good here. I never hear about dogs taking vitamins. Why don't they have vitamins for dogs? They do. They oh, do. Well, he already why is takes it popular. Why are they popular? <laughs> he takes vitamins for his allergies in his coat. So I mean, he'll take. Uh, so I'm gonna look for one for like joints and stuff. I think he's, maybe he's getting arthritis in his old age, bro. Maybe give him a nice hot bath. <laughs> but anyway, dude. Um, so Sacramento was great. Four sold out shows. Um, the audiences were awesome, dude. I've never been so stressed out in my life, like to do shows. I was just Why were like you so stressed. And honestly, dude, I slept probably a total of maybe six to nine hours in three days. So. I mean, I was stressed because we were supposed to do our show indoors, like Sacramento County was supposed to be allowed to do indoor dining by that time. And then like last minute, they wouldn't let them do it. So we had to move our show outdoors and it was supposed to rain, bro. So I had like four sold out shows. you could have pulled a prince, man. That would have been your opportunity to shine. (laughs) And now that performance lives on forever. I don't remember when he had to perform the halftime and it was raining. Yeah, dude. He was going to get electrocuted. He's like, fuck it, man. I'm going to do it. I mean, that would have been great for me to do it, but the audience sit in the rain, you know? So dude, we had to go and get tents. We had to go and get heaters and it was just like super stressful. So I, I, I went and, um, dude, the, the venue was like short staffed because of like COVID and shit. And I had to go like help them set all that stuff up. So I drove to Sacramento six hours. As soon as I got there, I went to the venue, helped them set all that stuff up. And then right before the show started, dude, we blew a fuse in the whole building because we had too many lights and like heaters and shit hooked up outside. And then the show started like a half an hour late because fuck, I'm trying to figure out how to get the power back on in the building. And uh, I mean, the second day, Sunday, which was Valentine's day, everything ran so much more smooth. And I, my performance was just better because I was less stressed, you know, and um, everything went great, dude. And then I did that little performance piece. I told you I was going to do at the end. Oh, of the how about, what'd you end up doing? So, bro, I did this, uh, I got this, like, giant easel pad, yeah. right? And I uh, I have this bit about, like, not texting with your partner because it can cause problems. Like, things are taken the wrong way when you text, right? Yeah, yeah, So, I yeah. just saved that bit for the end, and I kind of told people the same thing. And I just said, like, you know, write them letters with, like, a piece of paper and a pen and use music to communicate. I just did, like, something special for Valentine's Day. So, the easel had, like, stuff written on it, and for each, like – Every time I would turn the page, it would be a punchline. And I don't speak during any of it. Like I just turn the page and it's like the punchline. And then like, it's a new song that plays with it. Like, you know, it was Valentine's day, bro. It was a lot of relationship stuff. Uh, It went pretty good, dude. It went pretty good. And then the last thing is just like, you know, I tell everybody only love can save the world, bro. And we, and we ended with, we ended with uh, Huey Lewis in the news power of love playing at the end. And everybody just fucking loved it, dude. It was a great way to end Valentine's day. And I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Like, I hate prop comedy and I just don't know what got into me, but I think that I want to do something. Yeah, you, you hate it, but you knew that your audience would uh, would appreciate it. So you know, you set aside your passion a little bit just to please the audience. There you and go. I was passionate about it. I'm glad that I did it. And I wanted to do something different. And I think every time I do a special event like Valentine's Day or some kind of holiday, I think I'm going to do something I want to start doing something special, you know, maybe not that, but I'll do Halloween something different. You start murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For Halloween, we'll do something fun. Like we'll just make it funny. You know, like I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll get creative, dude. I just always trying to push myself to be more creative. And when people come out to my shows and I'm the headliner, I'm just going to want to do something afterward to kind of interact with the crowd and have some fun with them. That's cool. Yeah, man. It went really, really well. And, um, I got a good video of it and I think I'm going to edit something together so people can see what I did. And dude, I, nice. <laughs> so the last show on Sunday, instead of flipping the pages, I was ripping them off. Cause I was like, I'm never using this ever again. Well, and that you was do like the pages after I just threw them on the floor. <laughs> you didn't save any of them. No, Not I threw one. them out. I threw you them out. Save them. And then when the video was done, 
you could have uh, given them to I don't know fans for commenting. <laughs> I like just to, didn't want to do that bit ever again. Like it was just <laughs> so stressful to bring this giant easel in the car for six hours. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, man, just constantly um, trying to be. Creative. Now you know how professors feel, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I know. Imagine being some professor. Dude, well, I was well, what kind the... of easel did you get? Which kind of, I, I got the V five hundred. Would you get? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? I don't know. I just made up a name. My easel was so cheap, bro. I mean, not ex- they're expensive. They're fucking expensive. It was like 30 bucks for a giant easel pad. And uh, and it was cheap, like quality. Like the cardboard was bending and shit <laughs> by the end of it. And um, oh, so dude, so my sister lives up there. And I actually brought my nephew to hang out with me at the comedy v- uh, venue. But she's okay. never seen me do comedy before. He finally okay. turned 18 and was able to go. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I had him like helping me out and stuff. And he went up on stage with me and actually held the easel for me. So I could. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You want to come to the show? Yeah, I want to see you. No, I need you to be my easel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to be my easel. <laughs> but um, it went good, dude. Just constantly, you know, you know how it is, bro. You're constantly yeah. pushing yourself to try to always learn new things and be creative. I was up the night before I drove to fucking Sacramento at five in the morning. But the night before I was up with a fucking jumbo sharpie <laughs> like i can't believe that prop comics do shit like this all the time yeah well it's a lot better than phoning it in and not caring yeah yeah that's yeah. true i mean my perform if i just did stand up bro it would have been fine like that's all anybody expected i fucking murdered the shows but yeah like- but here's something that you you really do appreciate the fact that people come out they come yeah. out to see to exactly. see exactly and you're exactly. like, you know what, what can I do? I could just, you know, tell st- jokes. That's what I do. But you kind of wanted to give them like a little extra reinforcement and thank you for coming out and making it different than everybody else. So good for you, man. Act, yeah, dude, 100%. Jameson like, says so too. Good job. <laughs> he's yeah. yawning or trying to bite you. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> dude, he's trying to bite. Look, 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 look. <clears throat> all, the, all the time, all the time, all the time. There's a puppy, bro. Yeah. Well, yeah, dude. So like people have been locked up and they wanted to go out and do something fun for Valentine's Day and money's tight and we're charging like 25 a ticket. I want to give them a good show, dude. So I didn't cheap out, man. I got really good comics to, to, to open. Like I, I, this local E Clark was like fucking hilarious. He was a perfect MC. And then I took Steven Fury with me. Who's like a door, like not, excuse me. He's like a comedy store regular and uh, he fucking killed it featuring. And he's just a good dude. We had a good time driving up together. And, um, Bro, you know what I noticed? Like, I've never seen this before. I've seen it here and there, but I've never seen every show. Like, if you do four shows, every show, there is somebody recording me. Like, I've never, I've seen it here and there, but not every show. And it was, it's, and I honestly, normally you get mad, like, don't record me, don't put my stuff on the internet. But I was just like, I, was I get it. Well, yeah, that too. And then I know that people are just like throwing it up on Instagram going like, we're doing something cool. Because I put these, these like really cool lights and candles up and it just looked like cozy and, and, and fucking comedy and, you know, doing, I don't know, something. Cozy comedy with Augustino Zoida. That Bring is a easel. great idea. Where's my easel? <laughs> oh, man. I even told the comic uh, who I brought with me, I was like, bro, don't watch when I do the easel thing. I go, because I'm ashamed to do it in front of real comics. <laughs> But there's something about this like quarantine, bro, that like I was watching a lot of like musical performances, like concerts, because I miss going to concerts. So I was watching them on YouTube and stuff like live shows. And I always whenever I watch that, it makes me want to be a better performer. It's like I'm just a stand up. What do we do? We stand there with a microphone and and we fucking use our minds to kill it. Right. But like when you watch the, the musicians, they're always like so much energy and putting some extra performance fireworks and shit. So it's like, dude, when I fucking headline from now on, I'm going to get creative and do something different. So if you come to my shows, you're not going to see the easel, but you might see something where I'm going to have fun with you guys at the end. Something like crazy unique. <laughs> you should bring a Nerf gun with you and nerf the annoying people <clears throat> in the audience. <laughs> or somebody's not laughing, just like brighten up and just nerf them right in the face. Dude, that would be hilarious. You think yeah, I'm not gonna be- do that? I'm gonna do that. <laughs> no, but you have to dude. We have like a uh I think Mini has like one of those big nerf guns that fits like a hundred like nerf balls. Yeah, and it's like a machine gun. Like, dude, that would be you know what? 
<laughs> you know what, bro? If we if we get into summer and they're still making us do outdoor shows, I'm just gonna bring a water gun. <laughs> a super soaker. It has to a be a super, super soaker. soaker. We'll turn that By shit the way, into a wet t-shirt. Me contest. and my friends used to pee in ours when we were kids. We were really evil. We were evil kids. <laughs> Dude, how funny would that be if I called up a bunch of people on stage who who volunteered and we do a wet t-shirt contest, but it's all dudes with like <laughs> big titty. Dudes. You, no, you don't even do it. You just want to see their bellies. You just <laughs> just get the bellies wet. <laughs> yeah, we'll give them a prize, you know, whoever had the best fucking titties Belly. or whatever. <laughs> I like I can that. See man. that sandwich right there. There's a sandwich. You see, bro, that's why every now and then, if you ever can, if you want to go with me, dude, just go with me to these gigs, man. I would. I will. I will. I just need more of a notice than the last second, especially if it's you know something far, far away. Yeah. I mean, if I can drive and I don't have to buy a bunch of extra plane tickets for the comics I'm bringing, just fucking drive with me. And yeah, uh, well, I'd li- I'd like to, but I'm also like, I do, I do have to be careful because of work. What do you mean? Oh, right, 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 right. Gotcha. You mean right now? Yeah. Right now, right, right now, yeah. right now, I have to be careful because of work. Because Totally. In the I, future, uh, dude, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully things are more safe. And But yeah, man, that would be so fun. Like, because like, I know that you stand up's not really like your thing, but you used to do it. You can do it for five minutes. And it's like, dude, if you can like open the show five minutes and then just, you know, oh, at the totally. end, I would do yeah, that you sometime. and I can have some fun with the crowd, bro. We'll fucking we'll get creative like that. Yeah, Every day I'd, we'll I'd think do of something that. new. That's fun. I just don't want, I just don't want to, if that, if that situation ever did happen again, I just don't want to step on any other comics toes who could have used that spot. You know what I mean? No, dude, fuck them. I'm the headliner. I'll choose what I want. Can <laughs> <laughs> Jameson come? No, I would still have like, you know, great comics doing like 20 minutes in between. <laughs> so um, speaking of, you know, always pushing yourself to be creative, you've been teaching yourself some new shit, bro. Animation. Yeah, I was, uh, we, dude, this weekend didn't like barely had a second to ourselves. Me and Anton were both, we're trying to get that, uh, our latest episode of Discovered Mysteries up. Right. Which that is, stuff you which were is re- was cool. this is our most ambitious one. You know, like I learned animation to do it, but we didn't just do animation. We actually built a physical creature monster that we were then animating on top of our regular 2D animation, doing crowd replication. <laughs> we made Anton an entire tribe of people and we shrunk them down oh, yeah. like, using VFX. And we did a completely like exotic location. Like it, it looks really good. It's just taking a long time uh, for it, but it's, it's awesome. And I've been doing a lot of promotional images for it too. I, I sent you some yeah. of that character. The TV that guy did. looked cool. Yeah, I just did a National Geographic one too. It's really, it's really funny. That's but, uh, yeah, awesome. I mean, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I mean, and it's not just to. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of it's selfish. It's just stuff that I just want to learn to do. I don't even necessarily care if other people see it. It's yeah. just stuff that I want to do. You ever just draw a picture just because you feel like drawing a picture, but you don't show anybody, you know, because yeah. you're just doodling. But it's more. I don't know. It's more complex than that. But yeah, I feel like yeah. everybody shows everybody everything now. Nobody keeps yeah. anything for themselves. That's right. Everybody posted up on Instagram. So I just doodled this. <laughs> you ever doodle stuff without thinking and then you're like, oh my God, that looks cool. And then they post it. Like sometimes you got to keep that stuff for yourself. Oh my God. My son is an artist. Look at this. That looks like shit. He's five. <laughs> it's not that great. He's five. It's great for a five-year-old. Yeah. No, no, no. No, but seriously, you're right. Yeah. I've been learning a lot of stuff. Sometimes I feel like uh, trying to give myself too much stuff to learn, Mm -hmm. but you know, especially if you don't have a deadline for stuff, it's just hobbies. Like if you've put your mind, like you only have, Oh, I'm feeling this today. I kind of want to do a little bit of 3d modeling or now I'm actually, I kind of want to, I want to do some more animation or, you know, voice acting and stuff like that. So and I got you over here to record some. Dude, that was a lot of fun. Um, Yeah. That new project, which I won't, I won't say like what it is, but, um, I, dude, I can't. Well, it's, a, it's a fun animation project between me, you, and a couple of our other friends. Yeah. And it's just something really simple and something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be the voice of a cartoon character. And like we work together really well, he, talking back and forth. I'm like, man, we'd be really fun animated. And I just happened to come up with a really cool, simple, awesome idea. I think would be great just to put up two to five minute animations up on instagram you know i love the idea bro i can't wait to start seeing it come to life do you have any more episode ideas i'll come over i'll do some more uh, not yet just because we've been um 
I mean, I mean, I have a bunch already written down. We just haven't yeah. recorded any of them because I've been trying to get the discovered mysteries and Swayze all locked down for for the end of this month to go out to. Uh, hold on, let me let Jameson out to um to to go out for festivals because you know submitting Swayze and discovered mysteries into 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 festivals this year. So nice, man! I can't wait, dude. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm also kind of feeling certain things. Like I just want to do it. Like yeah. I honestly don't even care. If, if, if some people see it, like I've never really felt that and, and until like the sitcomics thing that I'm doing, like, you know, obviously I'm going to, I'm going to post it because I'm just asking a lot of friends to do me a favor. So that would suck if I didn't post it. I bothered them, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? But mostly I'm, I'm doing it for me, man. Like I'm like right now, I just sent out the Seinfeld script to everybody. And I just realized that the script that I found online was the original Seinfeld script, which a lot of it didn't make it into the real episode. And I'm like, shit. And like Kramer's not even in it, but he's actually in the real episode. And I have Kramer casted. So I'm like, I actually have to go now and rewrite it for Thursday. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm getting script writing practice and reading scripts definitely helps you to write them. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to do, we're practicing acting. We're practicing table reads. We're, being creative with our friends and just having fun and uh, it, it is great because like it, it, it's experimenting something for you but at the same time it's also practice for what i need you to do for some of my experimentations which yeah. is voice acting yeah. and i just think it's, it's, it's really cool yeah. it's just finally we're finally able to well, something's going on outside it's oh. just we're finally able to you know come together and uh yeah, that, we did um, the went Fresh right, Prince. That one. went right over your head. Okay, never mind. What do you mean, come together? Yeah, we are coming together. What do you <laughs> I mean? Did, like, I, said it, sexual... I said it very sexually. <laughs> I did. Yeah, that did go right over my head. You know what? That's hey, maybe I, I try maybe, maybe that's why head? none of my pickup lines work. Hey, over my head? <laughs> yeah. Get it? And like, no. <laughs> Dude, a um, lot of fun. A lot of fun doing the shows. But uh, anyway, where, where was I? Where, where, where were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So you and I just did the Fresh Prince one. Yeah. Dude, you did a great job narrating. Um, Thank you. And playing uh, Jeffrey, which I thought Jeffrey. was, which was great. Dude, I want to get you to do some of the, some more. You know you know who else I thought killed it? I thought Lori killed it. She played. Yeah, uh, she did Ashley. really good. And I think I'm going to use LJ her did really good. I, I, everybody did really good. It was just fun. And I think that the, the thing that was most fun was like doing a little Q and A after with people. It was like yeah. more podcast style. So when everything's edited together, it's gonna be pretty dope, dude. And uh, don't you mean fresh? It's gonna be fresh. It's gonna be fresh. It's gonna be fresh prints, dude. But yeah, all of these episodes are gonna be edited together. Well, we'll be uh, they'll add music and everything. And uh, I think I'm gonna use Lori again. I'm gonna do All in the Family, bro. Do you remember that show? Oh yeah. We're gonna do uh, All in the Family. Well, I was just about to. Well, I was just about to do an impersonation of Archie Bunker. Wait, wait, Edith, that's the wife's name. Edith! Yeah. Yeah. Archie! Archie! I, I don't have... I mean, they're all amazing actors. I don't have Edith casted yet, so I'm going to have Lori do Gloria. I'm going to be Mike. The, the okay. like, the meathead. Bonehead? The meathead. Meathead. Hey, the meathead. <laughs> and then, guess who's going to play Archie? Who? LJ? Schubert. Oh, nice! <laughs> It's going to be awesome, dude. It's going to be That's awesome. Hilarious. So this week I'm doing Seinfeld and then um, hoping to knock a lot of these out by the end of uh, February. So we can start editing nice. and get them out by the spring. It'll be fun, man. Um, and that's it, dude. That's all I got going on. And uh, my next show is supposed to be Paso Robles, but they postponed. It was supposed to be March 20th. Now it's going to be April 10th. So, and you know what, dude, after that one, I think I'm not going to take any more gigs in California. Until oh, because maybe, of the restrictions? Maybe until like 2022, dude. Okay. Because this last one was so stressful with last minute having to move everything outside and get tents and heaters and stuff. <clears throat> and really, yeah, I, I can imagine like, it could be stressful. At least the summer, but... maybe. Maybe in the summer I'll do them. But, but, but now... I, you, you do want my personal advice? What? Do them anyway. Why? They, cause, why? Because you want the places to open up. And if they're yeah. gonna give you, if they're gonna give you a shot, just take it, even if it's shit, just take it, because it could be, inspire other people to well, want to go it, do it too. I, I gotcha, and and like none yeah. of it's shit. It's all like, dude, I'm gonna headline and I'm gonna give my best. You know, none, yeah. I don't care where I am, a parking lot, a garage. I, you know what I mean? But the, my reason for saying I don't want to do it, besides the stress, is like, it's it's so much work, and any second they could cancel it. 
like we can sell a, a bunch of tickets and I do so much work all month promoting and selling tickets. And then all of a sudden they're going to go, Oh, we got it locked down and I have to give everybody a refund. And it's like, I lost, I worked so hard. You know what I mean? So I guess if the time comes, that'll be a decision that I have to make. Well, I hope you make a good decision. <laughs> Cause so what I, you always got going make, on, I always make the bad ones. What do I got going on? Yeah. Man, working and getting getting these episodes and stuff done. Well, that's what yeah, I meant. I, I, got of... two, I got two big projects that are almost done. The the series and the short film ready for festivals so that I can go back to the actual animation uh, idea that I was working on with us. I actually recorded a, three or four episodes already. I just need to do all the artwork. All right. All right. But, but I mean, but it's coming together. I'm learning because I'm learning. I'm doing the learning curve. But uh, other than that, that's it, man. That's if all I, we if can I'm not do, working, bro. Yeah, I'm fucking just constantly I'm, trying to learn yeah. new stuff and get better at stuff. And, and uh, you know, I was telling Jen about, I think that you said that you're going to go to school, right? You might go back to yes, school. Yeah, start, starting a master's program for the field I'm already in. You are already starting it? I'm, start, I'm starting it in March. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, th- I, I think I had mentioned that in passing to Jen because she was like, I haven't seen him so much. And I was like, oh, he's busy. And I said, I, and I think he's going to go get his master's. And um, so we were talking about that. And she was saying like, oh, like in filmmaking and stuff like that. And I was like, no, in, in, you know, in, in your field, right? And then so, but I was like actually telling her, I was like, you know, for uh, guys like us, we don't need to go get a degree <laughs> in what comedy or filmmaking i mean sure if you did it great it would be awesome but it's also like i've never once gotten any type of entertainment industry job where they asked me if i had a degree in it they just go like you can get the job done you're a hard worker you bring the creativity and, and do we can learn anything we want to learn online and <laughs> uh, no absolutely and i totally i totally understand like why people like would be like oh you're not getting it in, in filmmaking it's like dude i'm already doing it and something i have realized yeah. is that when i when i have been paid to to work in that industry and like the film and stuff you know what i didn't like what? doing it because <laughs> it wasn't my stuff yeah. it wasn't like and i just realized you know what maybe i'm just selfish and i just want to do my art for me and and get that out there because you know it, 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 i always have these guys we're always making cool cool shit i always got you and and, and that's great i mean as long as i can do that i'm i'm happy if i end up mm-hmm. if it, something ends up blowing up making money that's great i can quit my other job but i i, I i'd rather just you know put some effort into getting my master's for my job that i already know how to do anyway and once i get my master's and like like 18 months it was just like the my my money the the most that i can make so i can make close to like 80 80 80 thousand dollars and so i'll just i'll just i'll take that and then do my other stuff on the side because i already know people in my field who have the masters i'm doing and they can still they still have the free time to go do all this other stuff that that i'm already Dude, doing so that's always this, what we've yeah. been about and always told people that's why we're homeschooled podcast bro is like we've always said like there's nothing wrong with your money maker job and whatever you are passionate about, you can do that on your own and you should Mm -hmm. constantly be doing that. And then you can just teach yourself how to do all this stuff, like, you know, editing and fucking video and websites. And you can learn how to do all that stuff. There's masters classes, YouTube. It's so tedious. And then just practice and just get good at it. Exactly. Cause that stuff is so tedious. I don't want to spend all that time working on somebody else's stuff. And then you just kind of fall out of love with that passion and then it just yeah. becomes a paycheck. When I love this stuff so much, I don't even care if I get paid or not. I'm just making this because this is cool shit that I want to see and I want to do. So that I it took me a long time to separate wanting to wanting to be. I, I was looking at this like the all the art and filmmaking as success would be like, oh, we're getting living full time off of this, making money doing our art, which would be great. But I, then. I started realizing, you know, I'm not really digging that passion because the whole time I'm doing the art, I'm like, how am I going to sell this? How am I going to like, no, I I don't want to do that. I just want to make cool shit I like. And if people want to buy it, that's cool. So that's, you know. I'm not trying to discourage anybody if they want to get a diploma in the thing that they're passionate about. That's obviously what you should always be shooting for. And and I'm not going to say like it's never paid off for people. I'm sure a lot of people like, you know, have great jobs in entertainment you know camera editing filmmaking directing i'm sure that they went to school for it and it was great but everybody i know who actually has those jobs 
didn't go to school for it. Like I know people who have sold scripts that made it on television or that was turned into a movie and, or have written for sitcoms that never even once took a class and had to write a script. And I mean, I, I know a tons of people that work, maybe not in acting or the creative side, but behind the scenes part, like, you know, the crew, I know all those guys that have like, I know a bunch of guys that have like, that, that are like location scouts, you know, it's like, they never even went to school for that. And you never know what you're, you're where you're going to end up, but just constantly do what you love doing, constantly be challenging yourself to e- expand new things you haven't done before, getting out of your comfort zone, being creative, learning how to do it, practicing mm-hmm. doing it, and uh, and that's all you can do. That's all you can do, bro. That is all you, you heard can. it here. Probably not first. <laughs> yeah, you, you heard it everywhere else. We just happen to say it today. But you know what you probably have heard here first that no one's ever said before? What? Bring a Nerf gun on stage with you. <laughs> Whose fucking idea was that? It was great. It was Whose great. idea was that? It was your idea, dude. That came and from this idiot circle. That's why I want you to go on the road with me because you get me thinking. Like, that's a good idea. And I'll probably do it. And then that made me think of water guns in the summertime. <laughs> and I'll probably do that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, it was good catching up with you. I haven't talked to you in a long time. <laughs> um, well, hey, at least, this, at, least this, you... at least it's for a good reason because you're running around doing shows. Yeah. I remember when you were so butthurt you couldn't go outside or perform anywhere. You were going, you were going crazy like Tom Hanks on that island in Castaway. Yeah. I can't do anything, man. What am I gonna do? Trying, you start I'm making Wilsons in your I'm garage jokes and on the Wilson jokes ball. Yeah. <laughs> is that funny? And I just draw the little smiley face on him. <laughs> Why is he always frowning? Oh, because I drew it. So you knew you drew the frown, right? Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, dude. It was. <laughs> it was great going back to doing shows. The shows were were. It was so great to perform for people and see the reactions and just watch people get excited about being out and enjoying themselves it was so awesome and to work with comics again and yes i was butthurt for a long time i'm very thankful for these past couple of gigs i've had and you know what dude i'm about to go right back into that <laughs> that lull again and i'll fight my way out again I, i'm fighting the good fight still bro there you go dude even joe that, joey diaz called me that's where i heard that's where i got that from joey called me he's like i see you doing things he's like i see you doing big moves you get all these shows and stuff. He's like, good for you. You're still fighting the good fight. You didn't give up. <laughs> nice, man. Well, that's encouraging. Yeah, man. I'm that's always, awesome. I got great friends that encourage me to keep going. And, uh, but most importantly, you got to encourage yourself, man. Nobody's going to encourage you like yourself. So you got to do it. Get busy living or get busy dying. Hell what yeah. Movie? Right now. What, right now? What movie? Die Hard. <laughs> What is it? Why am I drawing a blank on that? <laughs> Shawshank Redemption. Oh, that's right. That's right. I was gonna say Rocky next. Rocky. I love, like it's just it's just always just like our instinct. Just say when you don't know what quite just say it's from Die Hard. It's from at least Die Hard. if it's wrong, at least you get the respect for saying Die Hard. Yeah, I brought up Die Hard. I talk about Die Hard at least once a week. Like you can because there's so many good <laughs> movies that you can. Yeah. I, I I brought up Die Hard today to my mom. Like we were talking about airplanes because the other day when I landed. I, they, I, dude i got on the airplane in phoenix and they were like when we uh they're like hey guys we're headed to burbank but we may not be able to land in burbank in which case we'll just take you to orange county i'm like what <laughs> i'm like dude that's not even close they're like we that's may crazy. land in orange county just to give did you, guys you have to up. did you have to take a, a test to get on the airplane are they still no. doing that they no. don't do that no more <clears throat> um i've never had to do that so far okay so I think it depends on the state that you're going to. So yeah, everywhere I've gone, I've been okay. But when you come back to California, that's where the problem is. Yeah. So when you come back to California, it won't let you check in on your phone. It will, but it won't let you print a boarding pass on your phone. Like to go to another state that's not that strict, you're fine. But to come back to California, they, they go, you have to print your boarding pass at the counter. Because when you get to the counter, they make you sign a thing that I don't got COVID, I ain't got symptoms, and when I get home, I'm going to quarantine for two weeks. So, so yeah. Are you going to stay home for two weeks? Dude, after I got back from Phoenix, I went to Sacramento and did more shows. You're an <laughs> asshole.
<laughs> I gotta do what I gotta do, bro. But you know what? Maybe that's good that I don't. I'm I'm spacing out. Like my next gig is not till April. <laughs> All right, dude. Good to see you, buddy. You want to do something on Friday, or are you gonna quarantine for me because I was traveling too much? I'm probably gonna be safe from quarantine for you. All right. All right, bro. That's Usually fine. I wouldn't care. I, I wouldn't care, but I literally have to see people for my work, and so I don't want to be a dick. That's fine. That's fine. It's, it's cool, bro. I'm not gonna take it personal, fucking asshole. But I'm like, <laughs> hey, so you like that Bill Gates bit, huh? Yeah, that was funny. Everybody, yeah. if you want to know what I'm talking about, go to my Instagram. It's only a one minute joke from this week, and I threw up. I thought it was pretty funny. I threw it up, so you can throw up. <laughs> Golf clap um thanks man everybody make sure that you go to click the link in the description sign up for masterclass. we talked a lot about it there's you don't need a diploma just to go do something that you actually enjoy doing and you're passionate about like we said you know, who cares if anybody's going to see it or even if you want somebody to see it and you're going to share it with people i mean like who cares you're doing it for you because you like it and uh that's the message here visit us at homeschoolpod.com pick up the t-shirts i'm wearing one of my sweatshirts today document the journey homeschool podcast it's like it's it's dope it's dope that's my real hand doing a piece holding a microphone kevin made, made this design you. and then he also made the ex-president's design which is another badass logo you can get on a shirt a sticker uh, a mug sweatshirts hoodies whatever you guys can do to support the show um t-shirts are the best because uh you get to tag us in your picture and we're like fuck yeah man people are wearing our shirts just a little fucking good vibes spread those good vibes and don't forget that only love can save the world, you guys. I'm Augustino Zoida. He's Kevin Lyons. And uh, this is Homeschooled Podcast. Peace out. Homeschooled Podcast. Homeschool. The Homeschool Podcast. Why? Because it was homeschooled. I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to do that at all. <laughs>